test, test, test is what you should not be saying when testing audio. Well, this video should sound significantly better than the last one considering that I'm using my Sennheiser along with the Zoom H5. All right, just as expected, I sound amazing. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Kev here, back at it again with some infotainment for y'all. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what I hated about being an entrepreneur. Okay, hate is a strong word, but things that I definitely disliked about working for myself as a cameraman. And these are not in any particular order, I'm just going to speak freely here. Now, before I start and before anyone gets butt hurt about what's about to come up, let me just say that I understand that working for yourself can be very rewarding, very fulfilling, and very lucrative. However, the cost to achieve all that is what I'm about to break down for you right now. And these are only my experiences, but maybe some of you can relate. And I'm pretty sure that I'm just speaking out loud what all of you are already thinking. I'll start with hustling. Hustling is exhausting. And by hustling, I mean doing a bunch of work that goes unpaid until the hustling pays off. For example, I was constantly sending cold emails, cold DMs, cold calls to hundreds of prospects just to convert them into clients. And this could easily go on for weeks. Oh my God, like calling all of these people just for the possibility to convert one. And when I finally did get someone to convert, I had to take the time and energy to put my skills to work towards the actual project. So the total amount of work to book the project and then execute the project itself had a seemingly disproportional monetary payout. In short, I did a lot of hunting, but I got fed very little. Admittedly, this is a huge part of entrepreneurship. In order to do what you wanna to do to work for yourself, you're going to have to hustle to gain clientele. And for me, it was no fun. Moving on to the next one, negotiating prices and dealing with lowballing clients. As creatives, we spend thousands and thousands of dollars on camera equipment. We learn and build our skills so that way we can provide exceptional service and spend countless hours executing projects only to have prospects offer us social media exposure as compensation. What the? If they do offer to pay anything, it is going to be half of your asking price or a lot lower. Now look, as someone who is money conscious and loves saving money just like everyone else, I would like to think that if someone is shopping for a particular service, one would expect to pay a certain price point. Like, I wouldn't walk into a fancy high-end restaurant and expect to pay McDonald's prices. There are more low-budget clients than there are well-paying clients out there, so when I was hustling, like I mentioned before, filtering out these people was an extra chore. All right, the last one I'm going to talk about is taking on uninspiring projects. I first got into camera work because the technology was fascinating and I wanted to see what I could do with it. This is why I did projects like the macro parallax, the 360 degree orbit shot, and a bunch of low light experiments. These projects pushed me to resort to creative problem solving. But when I was freelancing, I would occasionally get project requests that were not to my taste. I remember someone asked me to do a product promo video for those little lights that go on flagpoles so that way flags are illuminated at night. I've also worked with my fair share of real estate agents who want to do projects that differentiate themselves from everyone else and the projects and ideas just end up being the same as everyone else so but hey, it's their video, it's their idea, so I roll with it. But because I was working for myself, I had to take on these uninspiring projects 
in order to get paid. And it did take a lot of the fun out of doing what I do. Now, everything I mentioned are not reasons to discourage anyone from pursuing working for yourself, especially in the camera space. But as everyone should already know, working for yourself comes with a lot of things that can potentially make what you want to do not as glamorous as you may have once thought. And from a practical standpoint, whether or not one continues the path of self-employment really just depends on how financially supportive the business is to one's lifestyle, and if that financial support is going to be worth one's time, effort, and emotional health, one will be depositing into the business. What are your thoughts? Comment below. This is your boy Kev, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.